I want to welcome everybody to the Wobble and Wait Bowser Nissan Theater. It is my pleasure to welcome a Big Machine and American Idol champion, Trent Harmon. Thank you. Wow, everybody's sleeping. It looks like a lazy Thursday afternoon already. It's all right, man. It's all right. I've had <laughs> yeah, tougher crowds. Yeah, you can get into your night that you had last night if you want to. I'm not going to go there. All right, so let's – now, how do you say the, the little town that you grew up in in Mississippi? Amory. Amory. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, Amory. And I was doing a little research, tiny little town, 7,000 people, though it said on Wiki in Wikipedia – it was the first city ever in Mississippi, at least planned out city in Mississippi. That is true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The railroad. The railroad. Right. That's right. Yeah. First planned city. I forget that, but that's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. And now, the home of an American Idol winner. Yeah. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. What's it like when you know that the show's going to end? And it's going to be, you know, everybody remembers the first person that won, and everybody remembers the last person that won. A lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I do get, like, that unique perspective I, I didn't really think about it during the course of the show but i get to remain relevant longer than anybody else yep. hopefully no, yeah, there's nobody trying to take there's the nobody time. coming after me yep. you know it's that's the end of it so uh just run with it yeah there you go that's yeah. a good way to look at it now it's all up to you well, it's up to me <laughs> <laughs> no pressure there on the show going back through all the songs you did on the show you really only did one country song being tennessee whiskey and then you did simple man but it was a little bit of a more of a gospel sound to it yeah. with the choir behind you. So how do you go from basically doing all that, showing all these different types of music into the country music avenue? Yeah. Um, you know, and for the people that really watch the show closely, I actually did three or four country songs. Mm -hmm. um, at the top 24 part of the show, we got to choose. I'll get into this later with the set, but um, it was the game, you know, it was the game that we were playing and, um, they expected me to sing country so much that when I didn't, it caught everybody's ears and their eyes, you know, because they'd hear me talk and I'd say, hi, y'all, I'm Trent. Then I'd sing, you know, Stand By Me, and it yep. would catch them off guard. But I sang uh, the actual first country song to be sung on the show is at the top 24 part of it. We got to choose our own song. And they said, Trent, nobody knows that. Why would you do that song? And I said, yeah, because nobody's singing country this year. <laughs> I said, y'all do know that country listeners have TVs, right? Like, yeah. you didn't forget that they do have TVs. And uh, so I, I, sang, I sang a country song that week, and it went over pretty well. They said, look, you got your country song. Now you go back to doing what we need you to do for a night. So, <laughs> I like that you said playing the game. Yeah, it is. He's speaking of which, on American Idol, on the finale, um, I believe you did Fallen. Uh -huh. And Falling was written by Keith Urban. Uh -huh. And I hear there's a funny little story attached to that. <laughs> As your record label laughs. I don't know. <laughs> well, there you don't know the funny little story. Not right now. Okay. I don't think I do. All right. I don't know. I'm looking over it. I don't, oh, I see? don't know. I really All don't. All right. Well, I then I maybe don't. we'll find it out maybe, throughout the course. Maybe it's, okay, yeah. All right. So let's go into these stories. These, I, just to kind of get to know you a little bit more. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done? That you got hurt doing? Physically? Yes. Hurt? Uh, let's see. I have this really gross looking scar on the back of my arm right here. And um, I usually make up a cool story about how I did it. But I was babysitting <laughs> some, my, my cousins, my younger cousins. I was like 14. I was 23. No. But I was, uh, I was jumping on the bed with them. Uh-huh. Well, they were jumping on the bed. I wanted to join them because, you know. It's fun. Young, it's fun again. And so... Um, actually broke one of the uh, the supports under the bed and slid off the bed and hit my arm on the frame, and uh, the bone just popped right out. Oh. And they kind of, they thought it was awesome, you know? Like they, yeah, I'm And I was sure. like, guys, uh, Uncle Tree, got to go talk to somebody. I gotta, <laughs> this, is, this is not how it's supposed to look. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you ever get to babysit them again? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, okay. they, they were all right Oh, they, they loved it. As long as it was you that was getting They wanted me to break care. the other one later. Yeah, yeah exactly. Was, they loved it. Exactly. So what's the best part about going home? Because being out on the road and doing all that traveling, outside of seeing family, that's, that's the, that's the no-brainer. When you live in a little town like that, there's always that one thing that, like, when you go home, you're like, oh, I like to do that. For me, it's always taking the back way into my the town I grew up in because yeah. it reminds me of growing up. Yeah, I usually, uh, I've got a little ritual whenever I get to my road, uh -huh. you know, like my road to my house, I usually uh, make a video of it. And oh, wow. Especially my mom doesn't know I'm coming, but I've got this collection of videos of me driving down our road. It's kind of cool because sometimes, sometimes there's snow, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's really pretty, and it's our farm that okay. goes alongside the road. And so, I don't know, I feel like I'm home when I get to go down that road. That's probably my favorite. Other, other than 
my grandma's or my mom's cooking. Or my dad. Everybody can cook. Speaking of which, your parents own a restaurant. Every restaurant. And right. you were a waiter. Yeah. Because that's what yeah. it said every time your name popped up on TV. It was like waiter, 25. Waiter. waiter. Yeah. Mississippi. That was me. <laughs> I've, I've asked how a lot of steaks are cooked and whether, whether you want fries or sweet tea or any of it. Yeah, a lot Sweet of tea it. always goes. You, sh you shouldn't have to ask about sweet tea. You do. It you, a, you, you do. I don't, thing. I don't understand when I ask for tea. and they, I, Oh, it, don't it comes, even get me started just, on that. That's, us Yankees, it, we don't know what tea it, is. Sometimes they bring it to me hot. Sometimes it doesn't have yeah, sugar in no. it. And I'm like, sweet tea is the way to go. Anytime you get south of the Mason-Dixon, just ask right. for sweet tea, and right. you're going to love it. Yep. All right. And the final question, what's that song when you're in a bad mood or just like, you just want to lift your spirit? What's that song that's like a go-to for you? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I probably wouldn't say any specific song. I would say an artist, and I'd go with Stevie Wonder. Nice. Usually turn on some Stevie Wonder, yep. and if you're blue, it'll it usually pulls me Superstitious out. Superstitious or something like that. Any, any, just any of it. it you know, his in, like his it. songs are put together so well, you can't usually remain upset. And they're all upbeat. They're even all his upbeat. ballads even, are upbeat. Even his sad stuff's upbeat. Yep. So it's it. Yeah, probably some Stevie. All right. Well, let's hear some some of your music, ladies and gentlemen. Try and Thank you. With